agriculture. It's the economic engine that drives this region. On this episode of Valley's Gold, we're exploring some unique specialty crops grown here in the valley. From jujubes to papayas, from moqua to opo, we'll learn about these exotic treats. So join me, Ryan Jacobson, as we visit these distinctive flavors. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project, a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the valley home. I'm in what looks like another continent, but I'm just south of the city of Fresno near Easton at Peng Chang's farm. With me I have Mr. Peng Chang and Michael Yang of the University of California Cooperative Extension Small Farms Program. Thank you for joining me guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, let's begin to start talking about this operation. It's okay. absolutely amazing paying what you've Thank been able you. to do here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know where to start because you have so many different varieties here, but let's just start what's around us. Okay. Um, you know, behind us here, you have what's, I thought would pretty much be unknown here in, in mm -hmm. the Fresno County area, but you have banana trees. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of an experiment that you just started here recently, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. And has it been successful or is it still, still a learning process? Oh, uh, it's still a learning process yeah. uh, because, uh, like uh, I talked before, I'm not a graduate student, so everything I just uh, learn by experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And so much of what you've done here, I mean, mm -hmm. there is nothing even remotely in a book that tells you how to grow this stuff. It's just it's just by trial and error and people like Michael helping you to figure out how to yes. how to do it right. Yes. yes and I yes. talked about a different continent. Yes. I mean, it's a very high humidity. In fact, yes. we got drops coming down because uh -huh. of the humidity from the tunnel mm -hmm. here. But it's a it's a completely different environment. But mm -hmm. it's an environment you've made to be able to accommodate these mm -hmm. crops. Mm -hmm. Well, Michael, let's talk about some of the incredible crops that we have around us. Again, I don't know, know where to start, well, but let's start sure. with uh, what sure. you have here in your hand. Well, what I have here is uh, passion fruits. Passion fruit. Yeah, passion fruit. This is a yellow uh, variety. There are several varieties of passion fruit. The purple one and the green one and the, the also yellow one. What? This is a yellow one. And Michael, one of the most amazing things about passion fruit is the flower that's produced. It's really pretty. There is nothing yeah. else that I've ever I've ever seen like it. It's just right. for for an actual crop, it's just absolutely beautiful. Right. I've actually come prepared here. I've got a I got a knife. You want to open well, up that passion uh, fruit and yeah, this is. Oh, no, put your okay. I know it's not quite right. Yeah, it's not quite right. Well, but I think right it, now we're in yeah. mid mid November, but mm -hmm. typically this is a crop that comes off towards the end of December, correct? In January. Oh, well, oh. actually, this is ripe. Right it here. is ripe. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And so is that something I could uh, actually taste right oh, now? Oh yeah, huh? yeah. Go ahead. It's it. 
you know, it's it's, it's a different feel. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful taste. It's sweet. And oh, very sour. sweet. Yeah. Uh, some people make this, uh, you know, uh, grind this and turn into ice cream, and you can make candy into out of ice it. cream. Yeah, that's you, it. yeah. You can, you know, do it's almost thing with it. I, I love it. It's almost too sweet. It's, it's a yeah. ton of flavor to it. Oh wow. Yeah, good it smell to good. it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, here, here, try this one. See, see what you think. So this is a white flesh uh -huh. guava. Yeah. And they get much bigger. They can get much bigger oh, yeah. than this, but yeah. they get larger. Up to, up to four pounds. Yeah. Up to four yeah. pounds. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest <laughs> the one you can one. get a piece like uh, four pounds. Try that See, one. I think these are absolutely amazing. I yeah. love the flavor mm -hmm. of them. Well, Michael, I'm going to drop this on the ground yeah. and move to what um, is another very unusual fruit. Um, or I'm, I'm not sure what this is. It's a bean of some kind that you're also growing in here. Yeah, this is a moringa, moringa beans. Moringa beans out of this whole big stock here. I mean, we don't want the pulp. We're just looking for these actual seeds, seeds inside. Yes. And, uh, you know, they look, that's what they look like when they're an actual right. taken out of the plant. Yeah. Right. But that's not how I want to eat it. No. I want to eat it when it looks bare like this right here. Right. We have a seed that's actually had the brown taken right. off and actually pretty well exposed. Mm -hmm. Right. Talk about how these are used by the individual that eat well, them. Well, you know, they, they, they would use that to, you know, the, the seeds here as a medicinal to uh, clean your immune system. Yeah. And other countries and people use that to uh, purify the water. And so uh, you, you can go online and read about this. We also have papayas here. Mm -hmm. Papayas, right. which are absolutely amazing the way they grow. When you talk about just that one stock, how many papayas are on there, you're talking... About 50, 60. Wow. Yeah. So you're talking a lot of weight on those trees. And they're just right. so distinctively different. But the real main fruit you actually grow is a jujube. And yes. a jujube right. is completely different than I think what most individuals know what it is. I compare it probably to the texture of a dry apple, probably the a best date. way to explain. Uh, and a, a lot date, of and call a date. The, the, the Chinese dates. The Chinese dates, okay. Yeah. And um, I love them because they're so flavorful, they're pulpy, um, but they just have an incredible Very taste. Very sweet. The jujube is there that comes in about four or five, right? four or five variety you know, that can grow in the valley here. Yeah. So what you have there is the uh, the Sherwood and also another one is the GAX66. That one just came out maybe five, six years. Is that the little ago. longer one? A longer one, See, yeah. that's my favorite. I got to try that. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite yeah. too, that one, yeah. And um, these these ha can have, you know, this is a pure brown look because we're late in the season. It's ready. But they, yeah, yeah, this is very right. good. But you yeah. can, when, during harvest time, they have some green and some brown right. as part of the, yes. uh, the it, texture it, there. It, this back hole, you know, you, you can see the different colors. Yeah. There. Yeah. When all paying, we've talked about yes. some of the crops. I'm sure there's a lot more that you grow, but where do you end up selling all these? Uh, I sell it to uh, the direct uh, wholesale in uh, San Jose and uh, San Francisco. Okay, so you go up to the Bay Area for the market. Yeah. Well, after this, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to find you so they can yeah. come get some of these the yes. special products themselves mm -hmm. because it's uh, neat to be able to find it domestically because mm -hmm. most of this stuff is stuff that's imported in and obviously mm -hmm. it's uh, not picked as ripe as uh, Peng is right. picking it. So. Right. Well, good. I want to thank you guys so okay. much for showing me this incredible farm and giving me a little bit more knowledge about uh, these different varieties we have here in the San Joaquin Valley. Yeah, thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Peng. I appreciate thank it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. I have found my way out to Cherta Farms near Del Rey. With me, I have owner Tessa Lee. Tessa, thank you for joining me. Thank you. I'm here today to visit for you for two specific crops. Two crops that I'm gonna be honest, I never okay. even heard of until I came out to your place okay. today. Okay. And that's Moqua and Opo. And so we're gonna take one by itself and we're gonna, we're gonna go through it. Let's start okay. with the Moqua. Okay. You wanna pick one of the Moquas up? Yeah, and... this, is, uh, uh, this is a Moqua. Uh, and, 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 and can you explain, Mokwa is actually a translation. What is what is the translation? Um, the word mokwa is in is in Chinese. Okay. And mo uh, mo is the hair. Uh, mo Kwa is a fruit. Got it. So, so it's a hairy hair fruit. fruit. Yeah. Okay. Which is uh, similar as uh, uh, fuzzy squash. Because we look at that as just an unusual name, but it actually yeah. is just a translation it's to a trans translation to English. Of fuzzy yeah. squash. Yeah. Fuzzy squash. So <laughs> so as we look at this fuzzy squash, this is this is a mokwa that's ready to be eaten, ready to be harvested. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, a bigger size that, that we have. That's the bigger size, okay. Yes. And this is the smaller size that we have. As. Okay. So it has to be um, between, the, I mean, from this small size to this bigger size. If bigger than this, then it's uh, hard to sell. Got it. So 
It grows on, you have a, you have a very nice trellis system that you grow this on. When do you typically plant moqua? Uh, our usual time is mid-March. Mid-March. And you, and that's a, you know, it's getting just warm enough. Do you have to put it inside of a hothouse at that time? Or do you, it's, it's past frost enough that you don't have to worry uh, about well, it? Well, uh, yeah, past. Uh, the reason I say uh, mid-March is, is normally we have a last uh, frost in uh, the mid-March. Okay. So sometimes we have on the 15th, sometimes we have the 20th, and sometimes we have on the 25th. Yeah, and this is a plant that you would typically carry through yeah, to, uh, October? Un until Thanksgiving. Until Thanksgiving, until yes. the frost hits. Yes. Okay, wow, so it's a definitely definitely a different year. And so from the time you plant it in mid-March and it starts climbing through that, and I'm sure you're doing a lot of hand work to make sure it goes up that appropriately, how long until does it take to grow until harvest time? Well, uh, it takes about two and a half months. Two and a half months, okay. Uh, to, to get to the fruiting. And um, it's a gorgeous flower. Moqua has a very yes. pretty yellow flower. Um, it looks, does it take bees for pollination yes. to make sure it, it pollinates? And what about crop, uh, you know, as far as for that crop, is there a lot of pest pressures, a lot of diseases that you have to worry about? Well, for moqua, the, the, uh, there are two things that we have to watch out for. Yes, uh, one is the aphid. Yeah, okay. But what we're really concerned is when it gets mites. Oh, okay, so aphid and mites are your, yeah, your big so, ones, but the mites are the ones of the big concern. Uh, mites is the bigger, uh, biggest concern. Okay. Yeah. Now, when we take a fruit of this size, which you, you say is kind of the, the bottom size of uh, being ready to be mm -hmm. harvested there, how long from the flower to this size? How long does it take? Uh, it takes about a week. A week? That's it? It takes about a week. So it's a lot like a zucchini in my backyard that grows so fast yes. that... If you miss one day, you miss picking one day, uh, you, it might be too big by the time you come big. back. Okay. So we have us about every uh, two, three days. Oh, okay. And Tessa, Mokwa, how do I eat it? If I wanted to take this home, um, what's, the, what's the way you, you, you uh, would, would like me to uh, make it so that it's easy to do something with and at the same time enjoy it? The most easy thing to do is you peel it and you just put it in the water. You boil it until it turns soft and you uh, put it in the refrigerator and you drink the juice as tea and oh, wow. you, you drink the uh, meat as a, a refreshener or or um, Just something snack. to cool down with. Yeah, yes. snack to cool down with. Wow, okay. So that's uh, the easiest thing. And the other, uh, next in line is that you peel it, you chop, and you just make a stew. Oh, make a stew out of it. Okay, okay. Well, that sounds easy. <laughs> I'll have so, to try that out. And if you want to increase flavor, just cut a, a couple, um, a piece of lemongrass, throw in there. A couple pieces of lemongrass, okay. And Tessa, the other reason I'm here is also to talk about opal. And we have a gorgeous example of an opal here. So let's begin with, when do you plant an opal? Well, uh, we, I plant at the same time. Same time, okay. Same time. So uh, once I start harvesting this, you can see that they are not uh, very big. They are about the same size. V very similar, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the harvest would start, if I started harvest this one, I was, can continue harvest. Uh, Absolutely. That Absolutely. And um, in two or three days, depending on the weather. If it's very hot, then we harvest on the third day. Okay. If uh, the weather is cooler, then we harvest on the fourth or the fifth day. And we got to see opal harvest going on. So it just really, it's, it's very basic. Uh, wheelbarrows going down. The individuals that are harvesting are very skilled at looking at what needs to be harvested when. And as you said, if you wait too, one, one day too long, you're gonna miss that opportunity to, to pick it so it grows so fast. And we talked about a lot of hand labor. These all the way through the harvesting to the actual packing of these. You'll, you wrap them in paper just to make sure you protect the outside because they're very sensitive. Um, so it's, it's a crop that takes a lot of hand labor. The one thing I wanted to do is I actually got to taste opal straight from the field. I figured, you know what, let's cut one of these things open so we can see what the inside looks like because it's something that I kind of consider to be very similar to like a cucumber, for example. So um, it, it's something that, you know, it, it tastes like a cucumber. It has a little bit more of a flavor, to me it does at least, to, um, to what a cucumber has, but it's just a solid, as you said, fruit. Just kind of a gorgeous flavor there. And the way that you told me that I should be trying this out, first off, is to, is to peel it, just yes. to peel it out on the outside and throw it in the refrigerator and it becomes a nice cool snack when you want something uh, cool, to, cool to snack on there. So, and uh, again, it's very, very, very easy there. And I think the one thing I want to end with, Tessa, is we're talking about these very unique, just really neat crops, stuff, stuff that most people probably don't know is grown in the valley. 
where can you find it locally? Where is, where is, is this available in specialty markets? Well, if you go to all the oriental uh, grocery store, you should find them. Okay, the oriental yeah, uh, grocery oriental. stores will, yes. ha will have this available. So again, Mokwa and Opo are two of the more distinctive crops we grow here in the valley. I thank you so much for having me out on your farm today and sharing a whole lot more about these two crops that I knew nothing about. So I appreciate it, Tessa. Thank you welcome so much. To, uh, welcome to the, uh, you are coming here. No, I appreciate it, thanks. <laughs>
and then you add a little bit of sugar. Oh, you got it. Yeah, add the, add yeah. the sweetness to it. Yeah, the sweetness. Just a Just little a sprinkle bit. sprinkle sugar yeah. over the top mm -hmm. of it. And then... We're going to mix it back up, I think, you, at that point. Yeah, mix it back up. Yeah. Well, Oot, you're and definitely getting the, uh, the award for the most exotic <laughs> salad I think I've ever had. So this is definitely non-traditional for, for a yeah. lot of us, and so that's why and it's so then, exciting to... I think that's on. That's it. That's on, done. And then you can play, I think, it. And so when it comes to the ingredient side of it, very simplistic. Well, yes. This is stuff that yes, we the, can, most of mm -hmm, us can, with can, the exception of probably the papaya, mm -hmm, it's a, something yes, we're going to find mostly yes. at our local grocery store, but the papaya is something that is becoming yes. a lot more commonplace in yes. a lot of the specialty stores of today. Uh -huh. Beautiful display of uh, salad there. And then if it for the Thai style, you know, the Thai style always put the peanut on the top. Oh, but okay. If it allowed, Add a little bit of a crunchiness yeah. to it. If it's the Lao Tian, they don't put the peanuts. They put, you know, something like the pickled fish or something, you know. Okay, in here. so the Thai salad. So this so, is a Thai salad. So that's it our like that. gorgeous Thai salad. And of course, Oot, the one thing yeah. I like to do on my show is taste what we obviously cook here. Uh -huh. So I'm going to have to give this a try here. Like I said, I'm looking forward to this. I've I've been fortunate. I've actually, I've cheated before. I've tasted this salad before. I have friends <laughs> that, uh, that have made it for me. Too hot. It's borderline, hey, it's hot. <laughs> you only put two small ones in there, too. Small, it's still too hot. <laughs> but the green mango, so good. And it's something yeah. I don't think, again, most of us here locally would ever think of eating yeah, green the mango. Papaya. Papaya. Green oh, papaya. That's right, I keep saying mango. The papaya, <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. Green papaya. Yeah, you don't, uh -huh. probably don't want to eat a green mango. Yeah. We, we well, that, can do the green mango, the same thing. You can uh -huh. do the same thing with mango? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I yes. learned something new today, uh -huh. so that's fantastic. <laughs> Well, this is fantastic, Oot. We're actually going to move on to another okay. recipe now. You're actually going to be doing something with moqua, which is, again, a crop I know most folks out there that are watching the show have never seen before. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, I'm going to help move some of this stuff out of the way here, and we're going to, we're going to see how to do uh, moqua here. So I'm going to pull this big uh, guy out of the way. So now we got, again, yeah, this is a moqua. This is our gorgeous moqua. This is, I learned this is on the big side of moqua because a lot of times they, you know, they have them anywhere from this size up yes, to this size. Yes, so, uh -huh. but that's your moqua there. And then on this one, we're going to cut the moqua into the matchstick like this. Okay. And then I cook this, you know, boil it in the water to soften a little bit. How long do you cook it for approximately? Uh, just until, just it's, until it's, it's soft. soft. Okay. Just until it's soft. And then I'm going, I have the chicken that I cut it up, and the garlic, and oyster sauce, and this is the bean treads. You so, know, it so comes in the package. And that like just this. looks like basic, that's just basic chicken breast yeah, right there that yeah, you cut up. Yeah. And so you said garlic, mm -hmm. and an oyster, oyster sauce, sauce, and this is a rice. Uh, the, no, the bean treads. Oh, the, the beans. Bean okay, treads. got it, got it. Yeah, got it okay. comes in the package like this. You soak it in the water until it's soft. And okay. then I cut it in, okay? And now you can just start the frying. You, you start, so, so you just you just put all this stuff into the yes, pan. So yes, let's go to here. here and go. then we're going to start cooking right here. And first thing, you know, you heat the pan and you put the garlic in. Not that hot. And then you add the chicken. Chicken in, yeah. And then okay. when the chicken done, and then you can add, you know, this mokwa. Stir fry with the mokwa. Right here. To put it on up. And then the oyster sauce in here. To make it a little bit. And 
And here, this is the finished product, and it looks like this. Well, Oot, this looks fantastic. I'm going to grab my fork here and give it a try. I'm going to be selfish here. I'm going to start with the moqua because obviously that's what we're, our show is on, and yes. I've never tasted moqua before. And I hope it's not my last time eating moqua. That's fantastic. Very good. It's soft and it's sweet. But there's uh, a good taste yeah, to it. It's, taste. it's actually quite shocking to me. I didn't know what to expect, but it's, <laughs> it's. I would even say it has a firmer texture than a squash, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. a much more distinctive flavor than either a cucumber or any other kind of uh, zucchini or anything else. Yeah, it's fantastic. Oot, I have to say, you probably have done one of the most distinctive flavors I've ever had on the show before. Thank you so much for sharing some of your great recipes with me today. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> great. And I hope all of you will join me next time for more Valley's Gold. Production funding for Valley's Gold is provided by... Everyone enjoys getting together to laugh, to talk, and mostly to eat. It sounds so simple, but the reality is that it takes a lot of hard work to feed us. The next time you sit down to eat, remember to thank our farmers. Gar Tutelian Incorporated since 1949 at 800-696-6108. The Myers Water Bank and Wildlife Project a water resource and education program, providing an educational experience that teaches students in the Central Valley about water and wildlife. For more than 60 years, Brandt has been a major supplier of agricultural specialty products. Formerly Monterey Ag Resources, Brandt provides sustainable solutions for both conventional and organic growers. Brandt, we're proud to call the Valley home.